JDT done a bit of DIY. We'll just ignore that though. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy Joey Does Tech, and welcome yourselves back to a brand new video. I purchased a Game Boy Advanced original, which looks absolutely incredible. Screen is perfect. There's a couple of minor, minor scratches for £25 on eBay. That included postage as well, so I thought it was a really good deal. It was buy it now, I was like, I'm taking you and adopting you into my Game Boy family. The listing states, faulty, good condition, Nothing happens when I put battery in and switch on. Selling as spares or repairs, no returns. You will receive exact item in the picture. Oh, so it doesn't turn on. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you got to the end, I know that it's been, you know, an extremely tough video to watch. I'm only joking, but there is another fault wrong with this Game Boy. I actually got quite lucky putting that on because the, the button is fault it's it's faulty. So you'll see in a second, any second now, that when I go when I go to do it, it doesn't turn on. There we go. Alright. So it's on, the switch is on, but the Game Boy is not on. So it is a bit of a faulty switch down the bottom, so we're gonna have to tidy that up a little bit. As well as the fact that the start button doesn't work. So that, that's definitely something that we can uh, we can have a look at and fix. I have got some spare button contacts and I think that's where this problem lies. That's what happened in a previous one. Let's take it over to the bench, take it apart, and hopefully by the end of this video we can have a fully working Game Boy Advance. Like I said, it's in great condition. The screen is barely scratched, ever so slightly, and then uh, the rest of the shell seems to be beautiful. The sticker seems to have a little bit of like water damage everywhere, bar this part, but I can't see any signs of water damage on the device at all other than, other than here. But yeah, it looks really, really nice. There's a couple of scuff marks, so I'd like to give it a good clean as long as I can get it up and running. So let's get this started. It switches on. There's only a couple of times where it doesn't. I'm gonna see if I can trigger that, but as you can see, there we go. So, uh, I've watched a couple of videos, and they say what we need to do is take apart the Game Boy Advance completely and desolder the shield that covers over the power switch here, and we'll go through that extensively in a second. Once we've lifted that off, we get some IPA, we give it a good clean on the inside, maybe extend the contacts that are on the switch so they make a better connection, good clean with IPA, put it back together, and it should be all good. Like I mentioned before, the start button doesn't work, so when we go into games and stuff, it's not it's not registering. We'll have a look at that as well, and like I said, I've got some membranes, aka button contacts, to, uh, to replace that with, just in case it doesn't work. Let's get it apart. Battery's out. It should be a nice, simple, six tri-wing screws. There we go, yeah. The tri-wing head is a size three. There is one, I didn't know this, but I mean, now I do. There is a Philips for the battery compartment. I thought they were all tri-wing. Interesting. Okay, first impressions, not not too bad at all. There's some like, I don't know whether that's grease or I don't know what that is in that screw hole, but it's, it almost seems liquidy. So I don't know if that's meant to be there or not. Just take this out. And there is, I believe, one, two screws on the motherboard that hold it down into the shell. Oh, we take out these side bits as well, by the way. Um, we've got one here, not just one, is it? Oh, there's one here as well. Yeah, I think it is just two. And now we should just be able to lift this out. Voila, how is this side of the board? Should we have a look at that uh, button contact first and just see if that is a, a case of replace? I like that, case of replace. So this is the contact. How is it, is it split? No, it's not. Okay, hold on a minute then. So this isn't split, it actually looks pretty healthy. Maybe it just needs a good clean, but I mean, it doesn't look damaged, the start button. It looks fine, other side looks fine. I can't see a reason as to why, and that worries me a little bit. I can't see a reason as to why the start button wouldn't work. Everything needs a good clean, that's for sure. The reason nine times out of 10, again, this is all learned, that I learned from a video. We have the on and off button right here. And on the underside, covering the on and off button, the slider, is a shield. You see this little shield here that runs across? What we're gonna do is we're gonna stick a knife underneath here, this shield, and we're gonna desolder here and desolder here, lift the shield up, and then clean the switch inside and get all the gunk out. I am just gonna add a tiny weeny bit of flux this side and this side. Okay, well that's not as easy as what it looked to be in the video, I'll be honest. Tell you what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of solder to it. 
Okay. <laughs> There's one. Yeah, I had to press harder down on that than, than what I thought I would have to. So what we'll do now is just take the little switch Rooney out. There it is. And then we're just going to desolder the other side as well. Wow, okay, that was really easy. That side was really easy. And now what you can see is the inside, and you can see all the gunk of the contacts. So we're going to give this a good clean with some IPA, as well as, I'll probably give, this, give the, uh, the shield a good clean, and the contacts on the switch. You've got one here, one here. If I bend these inwards a little bit, should give us a better connection for the switch itself. Now being honest with you, there's not much dirt on the Q-tip. So I'm also gonna dip the toothbrush in a little bit and give it a good clean with the toothbrush and not knock the battery contacts about too much. <laughs> and then what we'll do really quickly is just bend this up, you see. Nothing too much, just a little bit more of a flex. Easy as that, we should now just be able to put this back together after giving it a good clean and see if it works. Again, gonna add a bit more flux. I don't think the microscope is necessarily needed for this type of solder work. I'm gonna go right side first, and this metal is gonna get hot, so I'm just gonna be very quick. I believe that's one side, and I'm gonna take tweezers, tack down the other. Seems to be okay, but I'm gonna add a little bit of solder and just apply a tad more pressure. I'm just gonna poke it, just make sure. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, just check the sides quick. Make sure they're also all good. From top view, looks pretty straight to me. A Little bit of a solder blob on the side, but we're okay with that as long as it's stable. It's not horrendous. And this side looks A-OK. -okay. Yeah, feels pretty smooth, feels as switchy as it should. Let's put it back together and um, just make sure that it works. Does it work? Okay, so that's that's good. Off, on, good, off, on, good. I think we've got a success rate. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off. On, sweet. Yeah, that works 100% every single time. Let's see if we can fix this start issue. Sounds silly, but the first thing I'm gonna do for the start button, and all the other buttons to be fair, is just give it a, a big wipe down with IPA and just see if that resolves my issue. Like I said, the actual contact itself looks fine. The buttons look really good. I'll just give them a quick clean, but I can't see any issues. I think a common culprit is what they call ox oxidization, where you have like a, a layer of something over the contact and it stops it from working. It could just be that. I really hope it is. Whilst I'm here, I'll give the speaker a little bit of a clean. A little bit of dirt just on the end there. And we'll of course give the power switch a clean because we left a little bit of flux on there, if you remember. So we'll just get all of that off. Let's see if start now works. I forgot to give the contacts a good clean as well. Um, I see people do this in videos, so they, they, they push down and then drag. And it just cleans off some of the grime and dirt that builds up on them. So yeah, hopefully that does something as well. It's a lot. We'll leave it like that and just see what happens. All right, start and select are the only two buttons in. <laughs> so hopefully I can get to where I need to be. So it turns on, wicked. Does start work? Show me the money. Yes! I haven't got any directional buttons. Uh, start, look at that. Start, start, start. Result, man. I didn't even need to replace the membrane itself. Cool, now, the only thing left is to give it a decent clean because this thing, it's got a couple of bits of grime and grub underneath and like I said, the RPs and stuff. I'm gonna go clean the buttons and everything and just make sure that we have this in pristine condition. Hopefully you guys can see the level of grub that we've got on some of this. It's absolutely disgusting. I'm gonna bath everything. And look at this, even the screws, I'm gonna give a good scrub because that is just not acceptable.
Now let's reassemble. It's very strange, I don't overdo it when it comes to cleaning and tidying, etc. But when it comes to these devices, like, there's something about, it's therapeutic, washing them, cleaning them. Even the screws, man, look, I've washed the screws and they look so much better than what they did before. Except for this one, and the one next to it, actually, because they're, uh, they're, they look corroded, but yeah, it's just so clean. Now back together, and I must say that this Game Boy Advance is in great condition. Absolutely immaculate. Only issue is this sticker on the back. Other than that, you've got a tiny, tiny scratch on the battery compartment, but yeah, everything seems to be absolutely fantastic. And just to show you guys that it still turns on first time, etc. On, off, on. It's absolutely fine, absolutely fine. The buttons work with no issues at all as well, so start and select now works on the games. Um, a and B and directionals always worked anyway. R and L, exactly the same, worked as well. This might now be my favorite retro console. What a great little device that turned out to be. Just to confirm what we've done with it, desoldered the power switch, took it apart, the metal shielding off, and just gave it a real good clean inside, and just extended the metal prongs on the switch. I don't know if they're metal. So therefore, it gave a better connection when we were sliding it on and off. That checked out absolutely fine. Don't know what the issue was with the start button, but after we gave it a good rub and a clean and got rid of the oxidization that was potentially on the contact itself, we had a fully working start and select. The Game Boy Advance was a bit grubby as well, so we gave it a proper clean, a good bath. It looks practically brand new. I won't be getting rid of this for £25 on eBay to have such a nostalgic device look and feel incredible. It's priceless to me. I am considering an IPS screen for it. So if you wanna put in the comments down below whether you think I should just keep it original and exactly how it is, or whether I should get a new sticker for the back and add an IPS screen, let me know in the comments section down below. If you did enjoy this one guys, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I really, really enjoyed today's video. It wasn't so much a stressful one for me, it was nice and relaxed and chilled, and I'm really happy with the results I've managed to achieve with this Game Boy Advance. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, hello by the way, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.